In this video, I am going to tell you guys why I moved to China in the first place. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another video from Ling Ling. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you so much for all of your support. We just hit 4,000 subscribers. I'm so excited for all of you guys to join the internet family. Yay! Thank you so, so much. Okay, so today's video is going to be about why I moved to China in the first place. Recently, I have been watching a lot of videos of people here in China talking about why they moved to China in the first place and I thought, why not join in? Because that's a really good story! <laughs> and also quite an embarrassing one, but yeah. So without further ado, uh, let's get started on this video. When I grew up, I really loved riding horses. I would ride every single day and I remember in ninth grade, my dad, he asked me if I wanted to go for an extra year somewhere at another school and I said no because I had a horse. I didn't want to leave the horse. I also did not like the thought of changes. So I was like, that's not gonna happen. I finished my ninth grade and then in Denmark after ninth grade, you go to another school for three years. This one is called gymnasium. I know it's really weird, but that's what we call it. I studied there for three years. I got new teachers. It was a big change for me. I was like, oh my God, so many things are changing. We're not gonna see those teachers again. I was quite a nerd, by the way. <laughs> so everything changed for me. I kept riding my horse. I went to this new school and and at some point things just changed in my head because as I said when I was young I didn't like anything to change but then one day I was like oh my god this I feel like I'm going crazy here because every single day is the same with the same people the same things going on and nothing changes ever I know I guess it was not overnight it was probably more of a thing slowly coming but then one day I realized ah I'm going crazy here during the third year of this school my way of thinking really really changed I don't know what changed inside but suddenly I just needed to get out of my hometown as soon as possible as fast as I could during that time I also started reading more books about Asia I read the book my life as a geisha and I love that book so guys now it gets a little embarrassing because well I didn't in Denmark we don't know that much about Asia and in general and I read the book and I was like oh this is really cool China Japan I didn't know the difference between these countries so to be honest I really do believe I just thought that China was Japan like my life as a geisha was happening in China because China was like the biggest place in Asia. For Christmas that year I went to the photography club with my dad, my sister, my mom. We went to participate in the yearly uh, Christmas celebration activities, something like that. We played a game and that evening I was just really lucky. So I won a lot of presents and one of them was a book. Yes, this book was called Under the Stars, I think. And the book was about an American girl who was like really young and dependent on her new husband during the beginning of the 1900. And this husband, he suddenly told her that he was going to China because he was a correspondent and she had to go with him. She was really scared in the beginning, but then during her time in China, she really grew up, matured, became independent, and the husband was a bitch <laughs> and he left and cheated on her and whatnot. And then she just grew and grew and grew. And I was like, oh my God, I need to be like this as well. Like that is so cool. I also have to be a Chinese princess. So that was kind of my first encounter with China. I thought, <laughs> again, I thought that I had already experienced China with like my life as a geisha, both the movie and the book. And then after reading this book, I was like, I really need to look into the option of going to Asia because I just need to get out of here, right? So my feeling of like being tired of home and my feeling for adventure kind of 
got together and I started researching China as a destination. I talked to a few people and my dad's friend's friend's daughter just had just gotten back from China and she was like, let's meet up and talk about it. So I met her in a coffee shop with her boyfriend who was Chinese by the way. <laughs> it's so cool, in the beginning I was like, did she bring a Chinese souvenir? <laughs> <laughs> but um, they're actually married today, so I'm so thankful for both of them coming and talking to me. She showed me all the information I needed about going to China because at that time I had no idea how to get here, so I was like, ah! But she just said, you just apply here, here and there. Because we have an agent in my hometown, so the girl said, you just go there and talk to her and she can help you with everything and that's just amazing and it was a great experience for this girl, so she was sure that I would have fun too. So after talking to her, I was really excited, but then I started reading more books about China and I, of course, read the books, the three what is it called? Something with swans, three daughters of China. So that one is quite aggressive. It's very, it's a real story and I was scared to death. I was like, oh my God, China Cultural Revolution and all these different things, ah, freaks me out. I don't wanna go. So for a while I actually looked into going to America instead of, I'm not quite sure what actually talked me into going to China in the end. I think I just still had a feeling that China was a better choice for me because it was more different from Denmark. I was like, America <clears throat> is just... Well, it's different, but it's still the West, so I don't... I needed to go somewhere which was like the total opposite of my own country. <laughs> <laughs> and China was number one on that list. So after a while I signed up for this agency. I talked to the woman at the office and she said my English was fine. So I went to China with this agency, which I'm still in contact with, Imachi, you can see the link below. I really, really love that company. They literally shaped my future, literally. Cause they helped me come here, they helped me settle down or like settle in and they helped me when I was lost in South China and yeah they just helped me with everything when I felt when I had a problem they would talk to me and I would feel oh okay it's not really a problem or let's fix it together and you'll be fine so that's actually how and why I moved to China I was just like super tired of my own little country I thought my own little country was like a kindergarten the government was like the kindergarten teacher tell us what to do and where to go and if we didn't have any money they would give it to us and it sounds really stupid that I didn't like that but at that time I just felt like I needed to be responsible for myself I needed to be forced to get out there you know I needed to be on my own I needed to take care of myself and not get help from anyone so I actually traveled around for two years supporting myself just by working and then traveling a little bit more and studying Chinese, learning Chinese. I'm so happy that I learned Chinese. Yeah, so I guess the reason why I moved to China was literally just because my home, my home country was just too boring for me, I guess. <laughs> I was adventurous, I needed to get out of there. And now I'm here and I've never looked back. Like, I'm so freaking happy I took this step towards my future and my career I got a passion and I could combine it with like earlier passions like writing journalism and now this I took pictures like long time ago I had my own little shop called uh, Lena East uh, Photoshop <laughs> where I sold pictures of my friends horses to them yeah it was kind of cool early entrepreneur <laughs> yeah. so I guess this, that's the reason why I moved to China and I have just been loving it since then of course there are ups and downs here in China as well but in general I just really really like my life here and what I want to say with this video is just that guys if you are tired or bored of what you're doing right now take a step out and try something new you know if you can but very often we can we're just very comfortable in our own little bubble our comfort zone so I just really want to encourage you to go and try something new if you're not super excited about what you're doing right now 
Thank you for watching this little storytelling time blah blah blah. <laughs> I hope you like this little video. Also guys, just want to remind you that I signed up as a local guide at a website called showaround.com which is like super cool. I think if you're a good guide you should definitely sign up as well. And also if you're coming to Beijing, book me on showaround.com so I can be your friend for a day and we can walk around and I'll show you all the really cool places, my favorite places and if you have any places you also want to go then just tell me and we could have so much fun I'm really excited so thank you very much follow me on social media as well by the way Facebook Lena around Instagram Lena around and that was all I hope you're having a great day evening wherever you're in the world and I'll see you again very very soon see ya and bye bye